AI is going to be nothing short of a revolution. People have likened it to the Industrial Revolution or the implementation of personal computers or even the internet itself. It's exciting in its development, but it's also something we have to take a really critical approach to as well. AI is in use in your car, in many household items that you use today. It's all very unobtrusive. There's no reason to be scared of it. It's not a real life person. It's a machine and it's doing its best job to interpret the information that we give it. Look, I don't think AI will ever replace human connection and I don't think we ever will want it to or need it to. I know there's a lot of stigma and fear around it, but I honestly think that it's a tool that can progress and grow and produce greater things in life. We can make things so much more accessible and inclusive for people. It has a massive potential for so many different areas of people's lives. I can see it being very valuable for language. We'll have a virtual custodian presenting in a virtual space. In education particularly, not only is there a huge potential for AI and we should be embracing it, I think that we are remiss if we're not embracing it. In an ideal world, it'll help us personalise learning for every single student. So no matter where they're at, AI will help us craft learning experiences for those students at an individual level. This is the way that AI will change the world. In the future, the cameras will ask the questions. Will they though? Within certain very, very tightly defined constraints, possibly. And that's the big opportunity and the big risk. So the idea behind artificial intelligence is that it's the study and exploration of the problems that need to be overcome to build machines that truly can think for themselves. That's an enormous goal. And even with this current upsurge in AI, we're nowhere close to it yet. So what AI is in practice is it's a collection of techniques that are amenable to a very high degree of automation that allow the drudgery in life to be taken away. I mean, bear in mind that one of the most successful applications of AI is the robot vacuum cleaner. So we're the Urban Institute and we do projects around cities and data. So if you've heard of the term smart cities, we do the data analysis for smart cities. And we make a lot of use of AI in that. Um, we use the data to predict things that are going to happen in the future. So we analyze environmental data, traffic data, people movements, we control lights um, and try and adapt the way streetlights work so that we minimize energy usage without risking public safety. We do a fair amount of helping councils to understand how well their waste management mitigation strategies are working so they can see how much closer they're getting towards this elusive, difficult to attain, very important goal of net zero. Where people get AI wrong, is they imagine that these, uh, these systems are actually intelligent, but they're not. The worst thing about AI is using the term AI. What they are is very, very clever pattern matches that can deal with vast quantities of data very, very quickly. And since a huge portion of what we do is simply repetitive, all of that repetition can be automated away. AI is going to enhance so many areas of our lives, but essentially it's going to come down to us as humans to know really where we want to use it. One issue with large language models like ChatGPT is how much society will end up relying on them. These models have the capacity to make stuff up or hallucinate, but often these small untruths are mixed in with a lot of truths and facts, so it's really hard to spot. AI won't ever be perfect. We need someone checking and making sure that it's doing the right thing and not having any errors. So we need a human in the loop. The ability for AI to form coherent, intelligent answers to questions or to be creative or to reason is nothing short of astounding. AI must be trained in a responsible way. While it might seem like large language models like ChatGPT understand us, they really have no comprehension of what we're saying or what they're saying. They work in a similar way to predictive text on your phone, except a million times better. They've been trained on 
millions of data points and text that humans have written over time. Yes, we can use it to enhance creativity. We can use it as a spark to write a story or as inspiration to paint a painting. At some point, we're gonna to have to decide what do we want AI to do and what don't we want it to do? What's essentially human about our activities? My parents, I will admit, aren't exactly the most tech savvy. They probably wouldn't even know what AI or chat GPT is. So I'm in grade 12 now and when I go into university, I want to do machine learning and I want to be able to grow with AI as it's developing and as it's growing and I want to be in the field. I've seen it grow as I'm growing up as well and how far it's progressed in such little time and the future, I'm, I can only say that I'm excited. There's nothing else, no other words. It's definitely interesting and going to be amazing how far it's going to come in my lifetime, let alone the generations after me. I want to see it be able to do the actions of a human, but also not just copy humanity, I want it to be able to be its own thing. I want it to not just try and emulate all the things that we do with like chess or when it tries to pick up a cone or when it tries to jump. I want it to be able to actually like do its own processes and be able to understand what's happening around it, not just respond based on the data that it has. I want it to be able to learn and grow and develop and help. I want to be able to help people. The field of artificial intelligence is so new that we're going to start noticing things that we never even really saw as a problem, like trying to figure out how to get from point A to point B. Proxy Tech is developing artificial intelligence in relation to robotics networks. So we're trying to develop AI that can interact with and use robotics parts. For example, getting a small rover to be able to drive around using purely information given to an artificial intelligence network, or being able to get a robotic arm or even a robotic humanoid to understand human speech and make more executive, more intelligent decisions about that sort of information that it's being provided. Being able to really talk to a robot rather than just programming it to follow a set of instructions. Currently, we're trying to get a, some, a large language model like ChatGPT to be able to program a small little robotic rover all by itself. So that would mean giving it the information on how to use the rover and simply letting it try to figure out how to program this rover. So traditionally, a human would have to sit down to tell the rover exactly what we want it to do. But now we can give ChatGPT, for example, a task or some information and it can automate and create the code itself. So really, one day, this sort of technology with artificial intelligence is gonna allow us to have transportation take us from point A to point B by simply requesting where we want to go. And it's gonna be able to make all these decisions for us. That's really where artificial intelligence is gonna shine, this sort of decision-making that we normally have to leave up to people. I'm looking forward to seeing how we can develop it and continue to grow it in the future. It's a very exciting industry and we need to make sure the next generation is ready to use it effectively. I'm thinking that we want to deliver a, a serious cultural heritage survival game. To get that many years of content into this space, you've got to use technology. You've got to use um, things like procedural content generation. Delby's trying to build, um, I call it a Indigiverse, um, and that came out of the metaverse stuff that's been going on for many, many years. We're trying to do it as a storytelling space to tell Aboriginal stories in connection to space as best we can through that medium. I like blending new technologies with ancient culture and wisdoms, and I think that when you imagine a grandfather telling you a story about your connection to country, Say for instance you're sitting in the campfire and you're hearing that yarn and then it tells you where you've been, where you're going and where, where, you've, um, where you've come from in the past, but then how do you present that? How do you actually capture that? How do you not forget that? We'll have a virtual custodian presenting in a virtual space. Now AI can complement that, AI can accelerate that and AI can then bring that back into a, a fashionable way of delivering this. 
we've been always talking about AI in our systems. You know, how do we um, program the brain of a wallaby, all right, in the, in the world, for them to think? And then what are all the influences to that thinking that are external to that brain? So those two things have got to come together. AI is important, and we're starting to use that as bit more and more. How do we take what's being developed at the moment with the sort of chat GPT type things and then integrate that into our characters. So how does a character then start to converse with you in a, in a, in a trained way, um, pertinent to their own environmental influences? Obviously we're training one of our AI to be a bush food expert and tell you all about bush food and then, and then but direct you in that way. And all this is the gamification of that user experience in this virtual world. Then you've got an AI that then tells a story to you that directs you to go interact with your environment. I think if we, if we can do that, then you've got a real transfer of Indigenous knowledge about caring for country, about how that caring for country cares for you, how that deals with your health, welfare and well-being, and then that generational knowledge can be then transferred over time, and there's your time concept coming into place. I think for First Nations people to have their health and well-being really addressed, they've got to, we've got to deal with these paths. And having said that, if we can play a role to build a better mousetrap that students could play, experience over an extended period of time, then that, they won't know they're learning in the edutainment that we're going to provide for them. I've done a particular training course that helps me to build what is called an AI persona and so this is how you can set up a tool like say ChatGPT to be, uh, perform a particular role in your business. It's used to create social media copy, so the written copy, it can be used to develop strategies and plans and just organise information as well. It's endless really, even now there's, that's just the written side of it. You've got um, other tools that can help you to generate images as well. And you also have other tools that help with video editing. We have a, a marketing system set up for each of our clients and then it actually helps us to generate ideas for content and, and different sort of social media uh, content for different platforms as a first draft and then it just saves that time of sort of trying to, to come up with ideas. We sort of bounce ideas between us and the AI and that's been really, really helpful. It's cut down a lot of time and it's made us more efficient. But again, as I said, you have to edit the content and whatever it gives you, you have to check to make sure it's accurate. Small business owners will adopt these tools over time, but they're going to be, they're embedded into the social platforms already. So I know uh, Mark Zuckerberg is looking at ways to embed AI technology into platforms like Facebook and Instagram so that when you're writing a caption it's actually helping you to do that. Even uh, Google has added AI to many of their tools so it's going to become really quite a, a normal thing to be able to use that technology because they'll be integrated into most of the tools we already use. We are constantly looking into uh, sort of what's coming what's coming up, what, what people have been working on. Uh, we're also reviewing our processes and review, reviewing our tools to see um, how we can improve. We support researchers in lots of different things. We use AI tools to assist those researchers in analysing that data. Uh, it might even be that we have some video footage um, from a researcher that needs the resolution increased and improved. Everyone has a different type of research that they're looking into, but all of those individual researchers are looking into these subjects because someone in the community has asked a question and we want to look further into it or uh, they're helping to solve a problem. It could be, uh, you know, helping make the world more accessible for people as well. One example uh, of a project that we've done recently was assisting a researcher with footage that they had captured from the HMAS Brisbane. So they had 360 degree uh, cameras on the, the bow of the boat, uh, which they had rolling footage of uh, to capture all of the, the fish species or the different sea life that, that are hanging about in there. 
Uh, the footage when we received it was really, really blurry. You couldn't tell uh, sort of fish from, from all the other blur. Uh, so we were able to use some artificial intelligence to increase the resolution of that footage. Uh, and now that footage is really beautiful and clear um, and the research is able to, to complete their research. I think it's really important to uh, remember that with every artificial intelligence tool, there is a percentage of you know, a fail rate or um, a misinterpretation of, of the question that you're asking it. So it's really important to continue to cross-check that information and not just take it as the model gave me that answer, so it must be correct. An AI tool can only work within the data set that it has been provided. So it's not smart enough to go and find other information. It's, it's working on the tools that it's been provided. So we as the humans are still the ones that provide these AI tools with their information to then feed that feed information back to us. It's still very much a, a human-centered approach to using these AI tools to interpret the information that we give it. I know that there's been a bit of negative publicity about it and like any tool, I think that you can use it for good or for evil, but as a tool for good, I'm finding it wonderfully helpful in my classes. I'm finding it really helpful for creating analogies. So if it's something that I don't understand, I can say to ChatGPT, well, I don't know anything about this topic, but I do know a lot about um, educational theory and technology and uh, netball. <laughs> can you please explain this concept to me using an analogy from those topics that I understand better? And it's an amazingly creative tool um, and it is able to do that. So I teach technology education, but I also teach occasionally at one of our partner universities in Germany. And I've just been over there for the last couple of months teaching critical thinking to an international student group. The way I used AI to help me was that I knew the topic well, but I didn't know the topic from the perspective of these students. The way that we learn, of course, is through our experience and we learn new experiences and we connect them to our old experiences and we construct our knowledge. And because these students don't have a lot of shared experiences with me as a middle-aged Australian woman, I was able to use ChatGPT to find examples that they would be able to relate to based on their own experience. My students are all adult students, they're all 17 and over, so I do give them some autonomy to make their own decisions with regard to using AI and I encourage them to use AI in their learning so long as they're using it appropriately. So some of the ways that I think it's going to be incredibly useful for students is first of all to help them understand complex information by asking it to provide the information with analogies to a topic that they already know or simply asking the system to simplify complex information like um, please give me this information at a year 12 reading level or please translate it to a different language or please give me this information as a pirate. It doesn't really matter what you want to do. In fact, I have my students um, have a lot of fun translating complex information into a number of very silly forms of output because um, then we all hear the same information in different ways and it's hilarious, frankly. Another thing that works well is to put the information to ChatGPT that you're having difficulty understanding and asking it to identify the key points from that information and that way you're sort of creating your own little index of topics that you need to understand. I really like ChatGPT for brainstorming, so if you've got a project or a task that you need to start, you can literally ask ChatGPT to brainstorm things that might need to be done. And then once you've picked out the things that you agree with ChatGPT about, you can ask it to put them in a logical order for you and create your to-do list in that way. So what's really important to understand about AI is it has no concept of truth. So you are the only one who can tell if that information is true. You have to verify information that is coming out of the AI. 
And the first thing you can do, of course, is ask yourself, well, where has it got this information from? So in some cases, the information is just what you gave it. So when I ask it to sort my ideas into a logical order and it gives me something back, I can look at that and know that the information is true because I'm the creator of that content in the first place. The second thing that's important to do if it's not all your information is to assess the output against your existing knowledge. The third thing that I'm telling people to do is to consider the importance of that information being correct because sometimes you just want a restaurant recommendation and it really doesn't matter if it's got it wrong. So I don't think personally that everything that goes into AI or every output needs to be fact checked but if it's important that that information is correct and obviously it is if you're creating lessons or if you're submitting an assignment or putting in a grant funding request then you have to check that everything is correct. AI cannot do the job for you by itself. It requires a supervisor and the supervisor needs to be a human being with the expertise on that topic to know whether it's correct and know how to find out whether it's correct or not. I think that we are remiss if we're not embracing it because our students are going out into the world and they'll be expected to be able to use the tools of the world. And this is one of the tools of the world. There's no point uh, avoiding it because they're going to be exposed to it in the workplace. If we didn't teach them how to use it responsibly, then that is a flaw in our teaching, not a flaw in the student. I'm excited for the future that we're gonna live in. I think we need to embrace new paradigms, new ways of thinking, that if we, we don't want to go back to refidexes and having uh, the yellow pages. I think it's going to enable us to teach more effectively, to offload some of the things that we need to do, the, you know, the menial tasks, and focus on teaching, and also engaging our students in new and different ways. Using AI um, as a learning tool rather than just you know worrying that they're going to write essays with it and that's the extent of what AI can do for us. As teachers I think there's also capacity that uh, in terms of planning, in terms of checking student understanding, in terms of engagement that AI will offer opportunities in all of those areas too. In an ideal world it'll help us personalise learning for every single student so no matter where they're at if they're in grade nine, but they maybe are a little bit behind or a little bit in front, AI will help us craft learning experiences for those students at an individual level. I teach a unit where we explicitly look at AI and students looking at the different things it can do from helping upscale images or video through to checking grammar, through to training your own AI model to, to look for whatever it is that you're looking for. And I think students, are starting to understand some of the applications that this may actually have. Um, in some of my other classes, it's still at that early stages where they they know about ChatGPT and maybe that's as far as they know. But then when we dig it a little bit deeper and it's things, uh, the underlying layers, even things like Netflix or Spotify, the way that those companies are using AI to drive better suggestions and better matching their needs and expectations. And once I think students start understanding that and start seeing oh, it's not just this one, this one thing is AI. There's AI underpinning lots of our digital systems in terms of prediction and matching those kind of things that they start to see how this might affect their future. Any change can be quite overwhelming for people and there might be a fear around of, you know, what, what change is this AI gonna cause? But I think people can help with this fear or anxiety that comes from it by, you know, thinking about what they can control. There's currently in Australia definitely a shortage of psychologists, especially in rural and remote areas. There are some bots that can perform therapy, especially with um, some issues like sleep problems or distress due to chronic pain and things like that. People can have access to that sort of thing. It makes it much more accessible to have therapy um, if they're willing to receive it from a bot rather than wait for a psychologist when wait lists are so long. I think with young people, they can feel quite comfortable in um, being vulnerable to a bot. You know, they're quite secretive about their private thoughts and feelings.
I have come across a young person that shared with me that they like to chat to bots on the weekend and that the reason for that was that, um, you know, their secrets are still safe um, according to them. They're not sharing it with another human. So it's a means for them to be able to sort of offload some thoughts and feelings, but in a way that feels really safe to them. I think it's uh, one tool that young people can use. Um, you know, if they have thoughts and feelings that they want to process, um, I think there's, you know, it's not going to be the answer to everything and young people that do have mental health problems or some issues might need to seek other tools or other help for that, but I definitely think it is one way and it can be helpful for some people. Look, I don't think AI will ever replace human connection and I don't think um, we ever will want it to or need it to. Um, human connection is definitely important for everybody's mental health and well-being, but I definitely think it can play a role in helping people feel connected. If AI is seen as a sole source of connection for people, then that can be problematic. Um, but if it's used as one tool, um, then I think it can be really helpful. What's happening now with AI is it's becoming more visible to us. And therefore it seems that this is an enormous change. But it's not really. It's just the next step in an evolution of technology. Banking, shopping, commerce, all of those things, are, it's already here with us. So I think finding the ways that we can take advantage of it to live the kind of lives that we want to live, it is an opportunity, not a threat. AI has a huge potential to support kids in their learning journeys to help them understand and interpret the world around them. It fills that space between you and the empty page or the empty screen where it might take you a long time to come up with ideas. You can actually really collaborate with AI technology. So there's going to be a whole industry of apps and other tools that come out that build on the technology from ChatGPT and the other AI systems. I think a lot of careers in the future are going to have AI incorporated. I don't think there's going to be one area that isn't going to be touched by AI. It's another very useful tool in the toolbox. It's a solution that's come about to a lot of problems in computing, but the way we can use it is going to really allow us to approach problems that we could never really approach before. I think it's going to be a tool that can improve everyone's lives as a humanity and as a society itself. I believe strongly in it. I think it will empower us. I think AI, for us, um, will get us there quicker. I think we're living in a world where it's inevitable that um, AI is going to be integrated and be a part of it. Um, and the people that are most resilient in this world tend to be the people that look at change as an opportunity um, rather than something to fear. So I think I would say that we can all embrace AI. Um, of course, we may be wary, but I think we can see it as a really great opportunity.